And from the Board of Education, the President, Pat Murphy, the Vice President, uh, Jackie Long, as we continue along in this hour-long look at uh, North Middle and the education situation in Berkeley County. And now, Bill, you're up. Yeah, and I want to thank Jackie and Pat again for coming in today. That's uh, This is a tough time, and I do appreciate you coming in. We talked about uh, uh, North Middle uh, and some of the numbers we gave and compared to South Middle, and that was looking at, in some degree, uh, discipline. But if you look at the test scores, neither North Middle or South Middle matches that, uh, in most cases, matches that of the state. And I'll make the point I made earlier. Uh, the threshold of the state is very low, or the standard state is very low, and yet we're not meeting this. Well, let me challenge. Yeah, let me uh, I'll okay. finish up. There has to be the buck stop somewhere, and, and I, and I want to know where the buck stops. The buck stops at the ballot box because people are going to throw out board members that they feel are doing an inadequate job. That's how they express themselves. Whether the uh, uh, the replacement board succeeds in changing the uh, dynamics of the school system um, is, to, is questionable. I, I've been involved in public education not only as a teacher but in governance uh, as a legislator. I, in some way, as a county commissioner, because you're making sure the uh, the monetary systems, the assessor, the sheriff, are doing their job, and then now as a school board member, and I've said all along, public education is and is an un uh, is like the gigantic marshmallow that you hit you, hit punch, and you walk away feeling like you had an impact, and as you're walking away, the marshmallow is coming back out. I told the board last night in the public it's time to roast the marshmallow uh, after this incident. But the uh, what do you mean by that? I mean we need to start kicking butt and taking names. We need to we need we have laws that says certain people at the board office serve at the will and pleasure of the superintendent, not of the board, but of the superintendent. We need to make sure the superintendent looks at the, where the weaknesses are and gives a, a chance to rectify through through uh, direction and if that doesn't happen you use your will and pleasure pro, uh, process you stop the cronyism that I've seen develop in this in this school system yeah it, it used to be if you weren't from a certain high school you didn't get a principalship or if you weren't uh, that, that sort of thing that that mindset and and that's that's one of the internal uh, undercurrents that's going on in the board office right now within the board. They're challenging those practices. But we, we as a board are replaceable every four years, three or two of us. And that's the way that if we don't get that message, if we don't, and, and what is sad is you have board members who raise the devil and, and question things, but if we're all lumped in together, so that's why I try to make sure we're all trying to work together. And I involve all four of the board members, not just myself and Jackie. We're here on the radio, but it is a group effort because individuals bring up solutions when they're encouraged to speak up. And uh, we've had Damon bring up ideas. Uh, Melissa definitely doesn't hold back on anything she has on her mind, uh, which I commend. And uh, Michael uh, has raised uh, interesting observations as well. But if we don't succeed, we're replaceable. And that's the wonderful thing about a Democrat. Well, however, though, let me say this. Everybody thinks that's running for the Board of Education thinks that when they're, they come in, they're going to change the world. Well, that doesn't happen because there are so many restrictions to what a board member can actually do. They're going to audit the system. They're going to find out where all the dollars went. They're going to change. They're going to increase test scores. No, they're not because number one, they're not going to even understand what um, is presented. Uh, you know, I get tired of hearing that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Folks, help me with this. There's a little kernel of a thing that I, we heard here maybe as long as a year ago that there is some incentive for individual school administrators to fudge 
numbers on discipline and test scores that so, no there's no incentive no there's not, not there, there's, there's something not, not tied monetary but no. what 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 there's you're no saying incentive. is they they if you report the problem then you get cited for it and and then the consequence of that is your state getting, takes over your school yeah yeah so there's it's there's something there's something built into the system that i as a principal it's not in my best interest to come forward and say, hey, I got a problem. Well, we were, the board members have to go through seven hours of annual training. And one yeah, of those it's trainings, going to be 12. And now it's going to be 12, but, but uh, a good thing. But one of the trainings we went through was you have to look at who you are suspending. You're not acting like Lady Justice with the scales and the blindfold. You're supposed to examine who, who all's getting kicked out. Well, I'm sorry. If you're fair with your kids, you're not going to sit there and say, well, my quota today is so many girls and so many boys. You're not going to do that. You're going to say who crossed the line and what's, what's, the, what's the consequence, and you do it. And you instill that up front with your students, that sense of fairness. And I, I, and I, I, I couldn't last in the classroom today. Pat, I want to ask you what powers the Board of Education has, because in this conversation, what I've gotten from the two of you is your only real power is to hire the superintendent. No, no, sir. We have no, we, we have greater authority than that. But you're not leading. You're not. I'm not getting that vibe from you here in this discussion. What no. I'm what I'm hearing is we hire the superintendent and that's we're done. No, what what we have is we have policy creating authority. Now, some policies have to be within the the code, the code and the constitution, but we have policy making authority. We cannot manage personnel other than the superintendent. That's his area. But our lane does have policy-making things. So, y yes, sorry, uh, to your earlier question, we have to examine the possibility of policy. Now, where we have problems with is that we, ha we have the pushback from the administration if the policy, one, is illegal, but two, is not in their framework thing, um, acceptable. I believe, and I've told you this, we should play Rawhide theme song at graduation to keep the kids moving, moving, moving. We're not holding them back and holding them accountable. We're giving them devices that they're destroying, and we give them another one for nothing. We have children talking out of, talking back, cursing their teachers. We, we had to get wands to check kids for weapons. We, we, now, the board has done that. We're working with the magistrates right now and Mr. Van Meter on a uh, truancy. truancy issues and stuff. So we are implementing policy as a board. We're innovating and pushing for ideas that haven't that were not uh, being done internally. We actually do so much more than individuals ever know. You know, you hear the board doesn't do anything. Well, uh, I mean we all work 24 7 i know pat and i do definitely i want to go back to the situation at north middle here okay. and ask you as a board member do you have the power to go into any school you want during the course of the day and yes. observe okay yes. have either of you been into north middle school in the last two years oh yeah yeah often by request just to see what was going on no uh, visit uh, i haven't been there this year and i haven't either um, is, I, it, is it routine for board members to schedule visits around the county to visit a school? Yeah, we. Uh, well, I, I don't mean, always schedule. I just, no, drop, we just go. We're dropping in, whatever. Yeah, and yeah. they don't mind that. Fine. And in regards to North Middle, and your last visits to North Middle, did you come away going, "We got to do something," or was that a day when you went, "Yeah, I think it was like a normal school to me." The day I was there, um, we got to stay. I got to avoid this. Yeah, question. I do too. All right. So if if you go to let's keep it hypothetical, if you go to a school and you walk away going, we got to do something about this. Do you have the power to put that on the agenda at the next meeting and begin to craft policy to try to help that school? Do you go to the superintendent and say, listen, here's what I observed at this at this school. What are we doing about this? These people need help. Help me out here. Yes, we can do that. We've done that at other schools. Yeah, we've we uh, we had concerns about Spring Mills Middle last last year and we uh, uh, went in and um, uh, the, the superintendent thought things were going pretty good and and uh, I'll give Melissa power credit she said you you all got to go check out Spring Mills Middle yes. we went in and I couldn't tell whether it was uh, between class periods or so many kids in the hallway 
Uh, that was one of her schools she was going to visit that day. Wh- whose job is it to get kids out of the hallway and into the class? It's, a, it's, it's the a school administrator. So they, the, well, the, teachers have hall duty. And what, then why are there so many students they, this, in the hallway? They, they kids were not having any consequences for their Pardon. misbehavior, and that's what we were alarmed about as uh, board members. Uh, we have since uh, they they we've been told that things are better, but that school lost 17 teachers in one year. There are only four teachers still there that were there back when the Nancys were there. And uh, now, of course, some of them have re- gone on to retire, but that was one of the top performing schools. Now, the scores are still high on, on uh, some of these uh, grades compared to other, uh, other so schools. Going back to that, if I'm Mr. Gilstrap, the I, uh, English teacher. Let, let and, me answer his okay. question quick. Yeah. I go to the superintendent. When, when I see a problem, have a concern, a parent emails me, I, f- I first ask the parent, may I forward your message to the superintendent? Because sometimes they don't want the superintendent to know for whatever reason. I forward the message on with the person's concern. I send the, if I go out into a school and see something, I tell the superintendent. I don't put it always on the agenda because I want to give the administration a chance to solve the problem before we make it a public problem. And all we, right. we all do that. I, I want to go to Dylan real quick as a substitute teacher. I saw that it uh, looked like he had his hand up. He wanted to say something. Okay. Dylan? Go ahead. Uh, you asked the question about like who's in charge of keeping kids out of the hallway. Yes. My thought goes to, well, there's the teachers that have classes those period that are concerned with their own classrooms. So really all you have left is administration, and maybe teachers that are on planning periods that at that t- point in time. And then because of a lack of substitutes, there are teachers on their planning periods that have to go and cover other classrooms because of a lack of substitute teachers or a lack of staffing in general. And I think a lot of those issues kind of come back to just the funding that is put into public education in general. And I think that's what a lot of these issues come back to a, a lot of times. Lack of personnel. We don't have enough yeah. certified. Te- we don't have enough teachers. Period. Let alone certified. Teachers. So if, if if I'm Mr. Gilstrap, the English teacher, and Billy Stubblefield will, is out in the hallway and he's not supposed to be, what am I empowered to do? You're empowered to make to make sure he goes to his classroom. Well, I can't. I can't grab him by the arm yeah, and drag that, him to the classroom, right? So what can I do? As a practical matter, he says, "No, I'm not going to go." And he and he curses me and tells me to do something that's unnatural. And he just says, "I'm not going to do it." Now, what am I empowered to do? You can take him to the office. I can if tell him to go to the office. You can tell him to go to the office. And he says see, no. that's, that's see, th- where Now we, we got the, the inmates running the asylum yeah. at that point. So is that where this is breaking down? Nobody actually has... That's where I see it breaking down. In some cases, in some yeah. schools. Yeah, we've, we've gone through a myriad of problems, and that, that needs to be fixed. I'm going to bring us back to the levy. If the levy doesn't pass... The problems that we're facing today are going to be increased by by several several factors. Definitely. So the levy must pass, folks. That that's the that's the message I'm ha- I'm hearing here. The uh, again, it's not going to fix all the problems. In fact, it may not fix any problems, but it's going to keep the problems from, from getting, getting much worse. worse. Well, this this still brings us back to the the root issue here, which is. The board has policy power. You don't seem to be getting cooperation from the admin building on Winchester Avenue, if, if I can read into this correctly. The superintendent is the only person in that building that you control. So you can't have a meeting and say, we need to wipe out this entire level of these people. You don't have that power. Your only power is over the superintendent. The superintendent makes the hiring and firing decisions on the people in the building. Well, we, we affirm those th- decisions upon his recommendation yes they recommend to you and then you say yes or no but by and large i'm assuming you go with the superintendent's re- not request. always no, no no we we've we've told him we've told previous superintendents forget it yeah all right so have you act both actively approved some of the people that are in that building now that you are having questions with i have uh, uh yes i i approved one of one of them no no i think two because uh, I mean, I probably of years. have two. And are they on continuous contracts, or do their contracts expire like the superintendents do? No, I'm sure. Uh, well, from so, some from who I can remember, they've been employees for years. 
Now, now, but now I, I have voted for some of them who are will and pleasure employees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I've told the superintendent, uh, what about? And then, and then, uh, but that's that's his call as far as who. He, he only has a limited number of will and pleasure employees, but they are the top echelon. They are the assistants, the deputy superintendents. You have to understand the frustration here, and I, I know that I see the frustration in you, but from where I sit on the outside, where I obviously think people have more power than, than they actually do, it's like we're watching the building burn, and we're making a phone call for, and I got my fire truck, but I'm making a phone call to, for permission to use my fire truck, and it's everybody's waiting for somebody else to do something, and meanwhile, the problem is getting bigger and bigger. We're waiting for the legislature to do something, or the State Board of Education to do something. Meanwhile, it's our problem. It's a Berkeley County problem. And are, are our hands really that tied locally that until, a bunch of other pieces move. We just have we just have to watch it crumble. I mean, is, is it? We are, from from our conversations last night, um, we are working on a plan, and that plan will come to us. We need to wait until what to the state board gives us the improvement plan from them uh, to see what we need to add to that. We are not empowered to come up with our own plan. I, we must. We can do both. I was going to say I disagree. I, I don't want to wait. I don't. I, I don't mean you're losing me. Okay. I don't mean wait, wait. We we have started on a plan. That's what I understand from the superintendent. But June 11th, which will be here before you know it, we will get the plan from the state. It could change some things that we have might have in our plan. But that doesn't mean you don't start a plan. And is the plan for North Middle or is the plan for Berkeley County? Well, for, uh, it would be for North Middle, but to, as far as I'm concerned, it should be far-reaching for all of our schools that uh, that, that definitely have issues. Because I see, you know, issues like this, it, it hits the news and it's kind of a big deal and it's emotional, but this is a great opportunity to see this is the beginning of a much larger problem and therefore an opportunity for a much larger solution. Because, yes. you know, you have yes. people are passionate about this and, and I hope that you're able to feed well, on that passion to solve as, the larger problem. As angry problem. as I am about things, I do feel like you do. It's an opportunity for us to start on a uh, uh, path to get this county going back in the, uh, the way it should be run and running. We have, a, we have a minute left here before we uh, shut down the show for the final commercial break here. Uh, what is What are you two doing between now and when you hear from the state? When's your next Board of Education meeting? The 23rd. What, is, is this part of that meeting? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. We, uh, I, 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 like, I, I like what you said and what Jackie's confirmed. We can look at this as, as though we're beat down, or we can look at it as an opportunity to, to shake up the system and challenge the system. What we can't do is try to do it all in-house. No. We've got, we got to reach out into the community. I don't want to create committees for advisory and just to let, let time move on to another issue and, and we move on and we're back here right now. Pat and I Jackie, actually think thank this is a slap in the face that we needed. And it's coming one way or the other, yeah. right? Yeah. Hey, uh, Pat and Jackie, thank you both very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Final minute next.